Welcome to the reboot of Solar Sunday. I've decided for my workshop I should aim for a 24 volt system and I'm hoping to get 1000 watts of panels put on the roof by the end of the year. The reason, oh by the way, the reason I went for 24 volts is because the inverters seem to be a lot more powerful and also my Nissan Leaf battery packs configure really well to make 24 volts. This is a 24 volt 60 amp hour battery pack and really nice and condensed. I love it. Now I bought the cheapest pure sine wave inverter off of eBay, 24 volt, 1500 watt, $150. I hear a couple things rattling around, I'm not quite sure what those are, so we're going to have to open it up and take a look inside, make sure there's nothing amiss. Oof. And then we can hook it up to the 24 volt battery, which I have charged to about 70%. We can check the unloaded waveform of the pure sine wave on my oscilloscope. Then we can start pulling a load on it and see how that changes. And then I really want to start testing it, running my vacuum cleaner, window unit, dehumidifier, and finally my lathe, which is a hundred year old lathe. It's not that big. It's like quarter horsepower motor. But I still do worry about popping this inverter. So that's where the 1890s color hammer 5.5 kilowatt starting rheostat comes in. That thing was used for starting huge motors in the 1800s. And so I'll put it on the first setting, which is very highly resistive, and that way that'll take off the the, really, the brunt of the inrush current when, when we turn on the um, the lathe, and so then we can look at it look at it with the high speed camera, and we can actually watch how that affects the pure sine wave. Well, let's get to it. I do like how big it is. Oh, oh. Stuff's already falling out. Whoa! Oh, shit's going everywhere. These screws are very tight. I'm not sure what's going on with that. I predict this is going to pop out on me, judging by how tight this is. Yep, I thought it'd pop out. Seems like a very, very poor fit. Okay. Oh, nice. They have um, some fuse holders in there. That's not very good. Quality on the soldering of the fuse holders, since they're crooked, is definitely not very good, but. They are soldered pretty well on the bottom. That is one nice thing though, they do have a nice gap there. First of all, for like cooling, but also it's just nice that it, you can actually see it. Those are nice connectors. 23.7 volts. I really I wish I had one of those big c ceramic resistors because I definitely do not like just plugging up inverters. Oh, this scares me. I hate that. Oh. Oh, ooh. yeah, that, that waveform doesn't fill me with confidence, but, I mean, ooh, now what is that? Is that the digital noise? Hmm. Oh, it ramps it up. That's interesting. I guess there will be a uh, slow start feature. Okay. That just does not look right. I can 
can kind of see it. Um, I don't know about that. I really don't. Now we should try the air conditioner. Oh? Let's wait for the motor to turn on. Oh, there we go. That was it. So we can run the air conditioner quite fine. Which is really nice. I'm really happy with that. Hey. Okay. That might be the resistance. a walnut, don't worry. I just want to ease into it. All right, let's hope we don't blow up the inverter now. Hey. Nope. Looks like it turned off up there. Oh, interesting. Well, maybe it's just this. Or maybe the wiring on my old lathe finally gave out. Okay, so the rheostat is out of the loop. Yeah, that's not going to work. It, the inverter just doesn't like starting a lathe. But I have a more mechanical analog solution for that. I'll get a 24 volt motor and have it running a 120 volt AC generator. And the momentum of the flywheel on that will be enough to store energy and it'll do this fine. So that'll be a fun little project we can do. I guess there'll be a rotary phase converter. And now finally, we have the air conditioner. We have a computer running, because I plan to play games up here. It's easier to see. Battery is being pulled down to 23.4 volts or 3.93 volts. Not much at all. Oh, and the, the flickering on the monitor, that's just because it's a plasma screen and it just looks weird on the camera. Looks perfectly fine to me. Well, that was odd. I just had it on and I was looking at the oscilloscope. And um, I made a buzzing sound and that turned off, but the computer didn't. So I'm not sure what to make of that. It turned off for one second and then it turned back on. Hmm. That's odd. Keeps turning off.
Okay, it was. Scare me. Okay. I'm not sure what to make of that. Cables are cool. Batteries, warm tem uh, room temperature. So not warm at all. Um, I'm gonna poke around with this for a day and do some research and see what that might be. I definitely don't feel safe having this thing connected up overnight. At least not right now, when I don't have good fuses or whatever connected up. Well guys, I've been gaming on the inverter for about an hour and no issues. I realized that the air conditioner never actually turned on the compressor while I was running it on the inverter. So, looks like it just isn't very good with an air compressor after all. But I think it'd be a very good idea to keep this as just a computer, fan, um, lights, equipment, oscilloscope, television kind of uh, inverter. So these will all be on their own circuit, which would be nice. And then I'll have to find a way to power the air conditioner off of the inverter. I realized um, you know, I was kind of surprised this plasma screen that I got from my friend, Thermionic Man actually takes 250 watts of power and I'm sure my computer probably takes about 400 watts of power when I'm playing oh, the fuck I didn't seem to go down though So I just spent the past hour getting really frustrated for poor reasoning. I forgot that that computer had been giving me those issues years ago when I put it, put it away. So I guess it's not that big of a, of a problem as I thought. I turned the computer back on and I played the game for a little bit, it worked fine. And then the, uh, the battery finally ran out of power and tripped the low voltage sensor and so the uh, inverter started beeping. When I opened it up, I noticed that the shrink wrap on the LED pins didn't fully cover it, and actually the tips rub against the outside case of the inverter, so that's kind of a bit of cause for concern. It works fine for computers and stuff, so I think I'm going to use one of these for my computer, television, fan, lights, and any uh, test equipment I might need, such as oscilloscope, because it seems to run the oscilloscope and such stuff fine. If I'm not mistaken, it started out with a very strange waveform, but whenever you run it for a little bit and it warms up, it seems the waveform seems to go almost perfect. So even if there's some issues in the, in the beginning, it seems to like they, they fix themselves after a while. But the number one issue, and why I'm going to be ret returning this one, is because... Whew, it's hot in here. I'm losing my breath. The DC side voltmeter doesn't work. And so, if I have to check the, the DC voltage, I have to use it with a multimeter. And if I paid 150 bucks for something, I want it to work. So I'm going to return this. And... Hopefully the one I get will be for that, but then that one will be my computer, television, fan, lights, test equipment, inverter. And then we can find another solution for the air conditioner and such. I'm going to call it there because I'm getting like really frustrated with all this and it happens to be all the other things that are kind of causing it.
or I'm using things for the wrong thing or whatever. It happens. I was hoping this video would be more polished, but this thing and everything else tried to throw me some surprises, so I guess that's pretty fun. I am going to go where it's cool, and hopefully next, well not next time, because the next video might be testing out a 12 volt, 1000 watt pure sine wave inverter that I got a while back. And then another one would be testing out the replacement for this. But in the future of the Solar Sunday series, I want to have an episode where we add solar panels to the roof. And I'm going to make them overhang the peak of the roof. So it puts the, uh, it casts a shadow upon the sunroof. Because when I made the sunroof, I miscalculated it and it's too shallow. So in the summer, direct sunlight comes in and it just burns this place up. When a cloud passes over, the temperature from the AC can just plummet. But as soon as a, just a bit of light starts coming through that sunroof, direct light it is so powerful. Well, that's why we have solar panels. It's funny, I never, I never fully put those together, like how incredibly powerful direct sunlight is compared to ambient light. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and thank you very much for watching. And I hope you have a very nice solar Sunday. See ya.